Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bureau from Staten Island Tech, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use cameras in Revit. Before we get started, I do wanna point out that cameras are often thought of to just give you a, like a finished view or a view to showcase a particular part of your project, um, maybe for the purpose of putting it on a sheet or exporting a graphic, but that really isn't the only idea that you should have for using a camera. I suggest uh, also using them quite often uh, as sort of disposable in a way where you could temporarily place a camera in a view or an area that would be difficult to see from the traditional 3D views or even a 2D view and adjust the items inside Revit while you're in that particular view. Okay, so we're gonna get started. And first thing I wanna do is I wanna just zoom out on this particular home and show you what's going on here. This is the uh, one of the iterations of the renovation project. You can see that there's a lot of finishing that took place over here and a lot of changes. I'll go to the top down view to show you the level one. You can see there's floors in every room and this portion of the home has been very, very much changed. We have a, a large kitchen here, a living room, two bathrooms. This bathroom is accessible to anyone. This bathroom over here is accessible to both of the children's bedrooms. There's a small office over here Another transitional hallway with a hidden washer dryer that transitions again into that master bedroom with a walk-in closet and a small bathroom. So here, uh, right now in this particular project file, I have one level one view uh, of this particular floor. Then I have this version over here, which has been used for some dimensions. Uh, for 3D, we have a regular 3D view, which you were just looking at and this 3D copy one, which is the, the view with ceilings. That's all of the 3D views that we have. When a camera is created though, you will have the ability to show deeper stuff. So first thing I wanna say is that right up here is where you're gonna find camera creation. It's in the view tab of the ribbon and underneath or nested within the 3D view dropdown, you'll see camera and walkthroughs. The built-in walkthrough function in Revit is lackluster to say the least. So I would avoid that at all costs, but the cameras are essential to having a finished version of your product, as well as some very, very personal touch editing that you should take advantage of. I suggest placing cameras in the two dimensional views of the floor plans. For instance, let's take a look at this kitchen view. And the first way I'm gonna be looking at it is from standing over here next to the table, and I'm gonna point the camera towards these appliances. So first, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna pick the drop down that says 3D view, and then camera. And then next, as it says over here, it says click to place the eye position, which is where the camera is located. I said I was gonna do that right next to the table, which is actually an island. And then you place the target of the view which I'm gonna put this countertop over here. So once I do that, you get this default view pop up as like other views that are created inside Revit, it's black and white, and it's set to like a medium type of view. We're gonna turn that off to fine, and right away I'm gonna to switch to the realistic coloring. You see some uh, shadows and things like that being cast by the ceiling. Uh, there seems to be like a white space over here. There's a reason for that, and I'm gonna get into that right now. But first thing I think you should do is click on the outer box, which is the prop view of the particular camera, and just expand it uh, in any direction that you want to, to make the correct field of view that you'd like to be visible. Then let's take care of that white space that's down there. That is because there's a clipping view or like some sort of a sectional plane that's blocking you from looking further into the project. And that's set over here, it's called far clip. So if I were to actually reduce this to let's say 14 feet and hit apply, you could see now that that clipping plane moved up closer towards me, part of the sink gets cut off and everything behind these cabinets. So you could either make this much deeper or you could actually just turn it off by clicking this checkbox here and then hit apply. And then you could see to the full depth of the project. Another thing that you probably want to change, because right now I'm in the realistic view. Um, this would be the consistent color view. This is good for evaluating things and moving things around. 
But in the realistic view, if you do want this to look a little bit nicer, you might want to adjust showing edges and putting anti-aliasing on. You can see that there's some, uh, some jaggedness where these black lines are. So I'm gonna actually go into the graphic display options and pick to not show the edges and to smooth the lines of the anti-aliasing. And as you can see, that does kind of soften the look of the particular view. Okay, so the next thing I want you to look at is the fact that the, the camera is placed at a height of five foot six, and then also what the camera is looking at, the target, is at five foot six. N neither of those things have to stay that way, and they could both be adjusted by clicking these numbers over here, but I would highly suggest exploring this navigation wheel. Once you click the navigation wheel open, you have quite a few options. Um, orbit would be you moving the camera around the, the focal point. Then we have pan, which is what a camera control actually would be, would be to slide the camera back and forth without um, changing the direction that you're looking. You could also slide up and down, which I think is very, very, very convenient. You could use the look command, which I think is the most important one. And this actually changes the way the camera points. We could see a picture on the wall over there. I could actually turn and see inside the living room. I could turn and see the main door of the home, look downward at the tiles, the chairs, the bay window, several things over here. So that look command is actually very, 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 very powerful. One of the things I'd probably want to do here is I'd want to move the camera upward a little bit as far as I can go to, to where I'm not penetrating the ceiling. This is going through the ceiling. So maybe over here, and then I'm going to give the, the camera like a perspective where I'm looking downward a little bit or perhaps down that hallway. And that's uh, an interesting perspective. Or I can t do the reverse, really, and, and bring my camera real low to the ground, almost at the floor, and then look upward. And you can kind of see it from what, what it would look like from a kid's perspective, which is interesting, too. Bring it down to actually see the tile or the shine on it. And you can see the reflections and things like that. So there's a lot of powerful features here, zooming in, zooming out. That actually changes the position of the camera and a few other things. Rewind will take you back. So you can go ahead and pick different views that you had previously set, which is a really cool feature to have too. So there's a lot of controls here. And again, that's called the full navigation wheel and it's accessible from the navigation bar. Okay, I would highly suggest using that uh, as much as possible. Go ahead and hit escape to cancel out of it. And that's, that's really it. So if I wanted to, let's say, refine this view a little bit, let me bring it upward to um, just blow that ceiling again, maybe there. And then if I wanted to maybe look at the, the table and the bay window, some, something like this. If I wanted to go ahead and keep this particular view as is with the current graphic setting, all I would have to do is I would go over to the 3D view that was created by the camera, because I can go in and out of this now as much as I like. And then I'll just right click it and pick save to project this image, I can name it, I could say just bay window. And if I don't change this, it's gonna be a very, very low resolution picture that's only 512 pixels um, horizontally. So vertical resolution of 2048 is uh, typically what would be considered um, like a 4K resolution picture which is why I wanna go with that. It's a high resolution picture or HD resolution picture. That's what I definitely want. And if I hit okay, it goes ahead and it saves it to a still image that is now over here in my rendering area. So now that is a static image. I can't manipulate this if I look at it in the rendering, but it does look quite nice and it is high resolution where if I zoomed in, it doesn't do too much dithering until I get closer. As you can see, if I go too close, then it does the dithering because it is just a still image. So you can go ahead and adjust the quality of that picture as much as you like. Uh, and that is not a render. That is a, just a, using the graphical images that are built into Revit. If you want it to be a rendering, then of course you could do that too, and it does get saved under the rendering menu. If I want to go back to the, the level one and, and say what I was saying before, like maybe I want to have like a much more unrealistic shot and this is like just a technique that you could use. I'm gonna place a camera now over here, looking towards that kitchen area also, 
Maybe I'll, I'll aim it over here. And right away, you can see that these walls are kind of in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that realistic view on. And in this view, I'm gonna change the settings. Let me spread this out more. I'm gonna spread this out even more, even though there's nothing there right now. But I'm gonna actually right click this wall and hide the element of that wall in this view. So it is invisible. Then uh, I'm gonna also hide this piece, which is the picture frame. And I'm gonna hide this wall too, even though I don't think it's gonna be in my final shot. I'm gonna bring out that nav wheel, change the position of my view to where I could see now quite a bit of stuff. And if I keep the unrealistic portions out of view, like maybe that right there, this is probably the look I was going for. And this is the type of thing that I would show off in maybe a brochure or uh, a final view that was showing off my home. As so you can see the floors and you can see all the appliances, the bay window and how it transitions back there. And again, I would go ahead and adjust these things. I would turn the, uh, the graphic display options up and smooth out those lines and not show the edges. And again, I get that nice look. And of course, you could run a render by clicking this button and then run a render, which I'm not gonna do right now because that's not the focus of this particular video. So yeah, I could, I could artificially change what the view looks like by knocking down some walls or doing some other things um, and get very, very creative. There are a lot of tight spaces in the house where you might wanna do this too. Like if I wanted to see this particular bathroom over here, Maybe I want to look at it from, strangely enough, like from, from inside the living room through this wall. And I can definitely do that by doing exactly what I had done right before. I'm going to quickly set one of those up. We're going to take a, a look like this or so. I know the focal point is in the correct position, but really what I'm looking at here is just a, a wall. So I'm going to have to move around a little bit to get a look at that wall. There we go. So I can click it and then pick to hide it. And then I will use that navigation wheel to move around a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in slightly. Actually use the walk feature, which I didn't cover before a little bit. Very, very gently walking forward a little bit. And then I will look to the right and pan over towards the window for the wall and then change my perspective once again. So now this gives me an idea of like what the bathroom looks like in a view that really is unnatural because if I look downward, you'll see that I'm actually still standing in the living room, but you won't be able to see that if you, if you go ahead and chop out certain parts of the picture. And again, you got those edges showing on the toilet, which does make it a little bit less desirable to look at. So I'm gonna turn those edges off and smooth it out as much as I can, the regular graphic settings. And even if I had a render with some lighting in here, it would look a lot much a lot more clean. And those things that I do, such as hiding these elements, which I wouldn't do this one, but just to show you, if I hide this particular element in the view, if I go back to the regular 3D view, those things are not hidden. Those walls are still all here because they are view specific commands. So as you could see, you could do a lot with your cameras to see certain things and change around certain things. Maybe if I wanted to adjust um, the placement of a window or, or other things like that, you're really not sure how the traffic flow in your house is working sometimes unless you look at it from a person's perspective. Like right now, this kitchen island looks really nice with the chairs around it, but it might be a little bit too big. And if I really wanted to determine that, I'd probably just quickly go to my uh, 2D view and I would stick a camera looking from that part of the kitchen this way and then I would go ahead and, and look look around and see if I can go ahead and adjust that. And I probably would. I think the space behind this island given the placement of the chairs is not really being used very well. So to adjust that, now I could see that maybe I'll go back to level one and I'll use the blue selecting tool to click all of those things. Now unselect this window and then just using the keyboard, I'll back it up to where that countertop is right at the edge of the kitchen floor. Gave myself a little bit more space to work with. 
and maybe I'll center it even with the window. And now I'll go back to that fourth 3D view and I can see the results of that particular, particular thing. There's still a lot of room over here and maybe it will feel a little bit more natural for something walking in and out of the hallway and coming into the home and walking past these people that would be sitting at the, the, uh, the kitchen island countertop. There's a lot of different things that, that really kind of come into play. And you do need that human point of view when you're designing as an architect or an interior designer to see the correct placement of not just things that are movable, such as chairs, but actual walls and, and, and floor types and window placements and all of those things, they do come into play quite a bit. So use the cameras both for your finishing views that you would be showcasing to people after you're done with the project, but also use the cameras as much as you can to help you tweak those final placements of walls, windows, furniture, and all kinds of other things inside Revit. That's about it. Uh, I encourage a lot of exploration. And if you ever wanna edit them, go ahead and explore this menu quite a bit more. There's a lot of options here. And once you start combining this with rendering, it's gonna be really your way of communicating what you've done inside your project best to people. Thank you very much.